Hello everyone, my name is Zahi and I'm the CEO and co-founder at APSI and I want to thank you very much for joining my presentation today. So in today's 20 minute presentation I'll give you a very quick intro of APSI. I'll explain what we do and how we're different. I'll explain a little bit the definition of what is visual app analytics and what is the difference between visual analytics and traditional analytics. And I'll provide you with some scenarios and best practices on how you can use visual analytics for designing your screens and user flows, for reproducing app crashes, for optimizing conversion funnels and complex in-app processes, and also how you can utilize visual analytics to optimize your A-B tests. So I want to start with a very quick introduction of APSI. So APSI is an in-app user experience analytics platform. We were established in Israel almost three years ago. Up to date, our SDK has been installed over 100 million times, and we're tracking billions of sessions and tens of billions of monthly data points. Uh, we have hundreds of customers worldwide. You can see some of our customers uh, here at the bottom. And I would like to start by explaining what is exactly visual app analytics. So unlike traditional analytics that provides you with reports and stats, visual analytics actually enables you to visualize every interaction that the user has with your app. It enables you to capture every tap, gesture, and interaction and visualize them, both for a single user but also for your entire user base by using touch heat maps for example. So I just want to start by showing you one example for a user recording so you can understand better what it means. This is just an example of an APC user recording. Basically it allows you to see every tap, every gesture, and every interaction that the user has with the application. So you can have a very deep understanding of the user's experience. You'll be able to understand what kind of struggles, what kind of issues, and what are the main pain points in your app. So this is in a very high level what is visual analytics is all about. So going back to the presentation, so I'm sure you're all familiar with some traditional analytics solution to mention Flurry and Google as free services and perhaps Mixpanel and Localytics as uh, premium paid services. All of them are great services but they're very focused on providing you with the reports, with the stats. But it's very, very difficult to deep dive and to have a very deep understanding of scenarios that you want to optimize. For example, if you want to understand questions like why users only install the app, use it once, and never return again. What kind of usability issues does user encounter when they use the app? why users don't complete a specific process in the app. So these are types of questions that visual analytics can help you answer, um, which is pretty limited when you're using what we call traditional analytics solutions. So basically it's all about understanding the experience. So we all know that sometimes when you design something, it's not, it doesn't mean that users will actually follow that design. Users will find very uh, uh, creative ways in, in completing tasks and in following the path that seems most natural to them. And I think that the best way to, to really explain visual analytics is by showing a few examples that will help you understand the type of insights that can be achieved by uh, using this kind of solution. So I want to show you uh, an example of one of our customers. And this, customer's, uh, this customer was trying to understand a very specific problem. So in his onboarding process, he had a specific screen. And he noticed that 33% of app quits are occurring in this specific screen. Now, it appears to be a very simple screen, uh, like a terms of service screen that the user has to accept and continue. Nothing really complex about this screen. But only after analyzing this screen with a visual analytics tool, the customer was able to understand 
the problems that are causing users to quit from this specific point in the app. So what we're seeing here, this is a heat map analysis of all the unresponsive ta tap gestures that occurred within this specific app. Now, an unresponsive gesture is a gesture that the user is performing, but the, the app is not programmed to respond to. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing a concentration of unresponsive taps around this checkbox, the I agree to the terms of service checkbox, and around this agree and continue button. So what's actually happening here is that when users are facing this screen for the first time, they immediately search for the button that will get them to the next screen. So their typical first action is to tap the agree and continue button in this area. So these are all the red marks you're seeing here. Now this action is unresponsive because the user did not check the checkbox. So the flow would be checking the checkbox and clicking the agree and continue button. But as you can see here, we also see a lot of unresponsive gestures around the I agree and continue button. So basically what's happening here is that users are trying to tap this button. We're not getting any response. And then they realize that they should check this checkbox. But this checkbox is very small, so it's very frustrating. So a lot of users are missing it. And only after you check the checkbox, you can click on the large button and continue the flow. Now, a lot of users didn't notice the checkbox, thought that they, the app had a bug or a problem, and quit the app and never returned to use it again. Some of the users realized this is a tedious process, completed it, but basically they were losing a lot of users due to this specific design flaw. So what they did was very simple. The first thing they did, they made the checkbox larger. And the sec second thing they did, they added a notification. So if someone tapped the button without tapping the checkbox first, he received a notification that he should uh, check the checkbox before continuing. And these two very minor changes helped them to improve conversions of the onboarding process by almost 27%. So this is one example where visual analytics can assist you in redesigning screens and laying out uh, UI elements and user notifications in order to maximize conversions within the app. So this is, this is one example. And another example, which is very common today almost in every app, is designing and building a registration screen. So today, a lot of apps are offering either a Facebook registration, an email for, uh, registration, or both. So we actually took the data of 100 different apps that offered either a Facebook registration or an email registration. And sometimes it, it's very difficult to, to decide between the two. So I don't know if you want to take a wild guess on which option won. But basically, we've learned that users actually prefer to complete the registration process with their email address. Although it's a longer process that requires more effort, we can see that almost 57% of users preferred using their email address to register, uh, and only 43% uh, preferred a Facebook registration. So this is a, an example of how aggregating the data of multiple apps can assist in making design design decisions like which registration types should I offer and which which ones should have the per, perhaps the more prominent uh, presence in the screen it obviously depends on the scenario that you want to track but this is just another example of how by analyzing multiple heat maps we can draft this conclusion. Another example I wanted to discuss on how you can actually utilize visual app analytics is regarding crashes. So crashes is, is something that is very unique to apps. When you think about a website, a website usually doesn't crash. It may, it may have errors or bugs, but the experience is completely different when you're using an app and it suddenly crashes and it stops. Uh, uh, from the flow that you were in and your entire context is lost. 
So uh, today there are a lot of solutions that are helping developers to track and understand crashes. But probably, if, if there are any developers in the audience, you know how much work and effort is sometimes needed in order to reproduce a crash. So sometimes a crash log is simply not enough. And actually, if you have a, visual, a visualization of the actual user journey within the app, it's very, very easy to understand what's causing the crash. So here, for example, we can see a user that visits the settings screen, taps the About button, and then the app crashes. So it's very, very easy for us to see and understand what's causing this crash. And we can save a lot of time uh, when trying to reproduce and resolve this specific issue. We also can look at the, at the actual crash log. But uh, again, this is something that is offered by multiple platforms today. Uh, and the replay part is the unique part that visual analytics uh, can offer uh, in assisting in improving the quality of our app. So the next thing I wanted to show is how we can utilize visual analytics to optimize conversion funnels and basically any type of process we have in the app. So I'm sure you are all familiar with conversion funnels. Basically, they're helping us track how users advance through different steps, a series of predefined steps they need to go, to go over in order to complete a specific goal. So here we have an example for a funnel. It's a very simple funnel that is called Shop to Payment that uh, basically tracks how many users went through the login screen to my, my card screen and then continued to the payment screen. So the first thing we can see here that we have a very large drop between login and my card, which is understandable. We shouldn't expect all users to review their card after the login screen. But we would expect that users that are visiting my card would continue to the payment page. And we see that we have a very large drop here, you know, around 70% not continuing from my card. Now, if I would use a traditional analytics tool like Google Analytics, this would be as far as I would go. I would be able to see that users are dropping from my cart, but it would be very, very difficult for me to understand what's causing them to do that. Now, with a visual analytics tool, I can now go ahead and drill down to the actual users and actual sessions of users falling from this specific point in the app. And I can have a better understanding of perhaps what's causing them not to complete the process. So looking here on this recording, I can now navigate to the My Cart screen and see exactly what happened here. So the user is in the shopping cart. He taps the Pay Now button. And now the app takes a lot of time to respond. So the user waits for 10 seconds from the second 38 until he quits the app after 9 seconds. So we can see that we have a very long response time for this funnel, the user is frustrated and simply leaves the app. This is obviously just an example, but you can understand now how users um, can actually uh, get frustrated by performance issues. And visual analytics helps us understand these issues, but perhaps more importantly, it makes us to be, it, it helps us to become aware that these issues are even happening. So this is another example of how we can use visual analytics to optimize um, the specific process in our app. And the last thing I wanted to talk about before uh, um, concluding this presentation is how you can use visual analytics to assist you when conducting A-B tests. So A-B tests are like very straightforward today. You can uh, think of two different variations that you want to test. You can run this test. But in many cases, A-B tests don't have significant statistic results. You can have um, very similar conversions to two versions that you are testing. And it's very difficult to know which version would perform better. So when you consider additional soft elements like 
usability or preferred flow or user engagement across time, then it becomes easier to select a, a winner. And that's exactly where visual analytics can assist. So basically I can now visualize users that are using every different version that I'm testing and I can evaluate different metrics that aren't necessarily related to conversion uh, and I can actually measure things that are related to usability, how does the user navigate within the app by with a given version and how the user engages the app over time and if there's a significant difference between any two versions that I'm currently testing. And obviously one more important aspect of visual analytics is assisting you in deciding which A-B test you want to conduct. So for example, once you understand a specific problem, we can then apply this optimization cycle that will help you pinpoint a specific problem, raise a hypothesis on what you want to change in the app, perform the actual A-B test, and then, and then use visual analytics to analyze the results and obviously complete the optimization cycle by observing and learning more on our user's behavior and thinking of more ways to optimize the application. So to summarize, I think that the more, most important thing to take from the presentation is, uh, I have a famous quote here, is that if you want to understand how a lion hunts, don't go to the zoo, go to the jungle. Meaning that it doesn't matter how much time we spend in planning and in testing in our labs, we actually have to go to the wild and watch real users and real behaviors in order to understand the problems, the pitfalls, and what we need to change in our app in order to provide the best user experience that we can provide. And we went over a different, different scenarios showing you how a visual app analytics solution can be either complementary or a replacement solution for either a classic app analytics that you might be using uh, as a complementary service for crash reporting solutions and also as a utility in assisting um, A-B testing. So this was my presentation. Uh, I just want to spend a few more seconds uh, by telling you that if you would like to experiment with APSI, with visual app analytics, I would recommend you going to our website, create a completely free trial account you can see all the different platforms we support, which is basically iOS, Android, PhoneGap, Unity, basically any type of, of native mobile app. Uh, the entire integration process requires you to drag and drop an SDK and add a single line of code, and you can start getting insights on your user's behavior immediately. And finally, if you would like to follow up with questions or feedback, um, you can email me directly or you can log into our website uh, or to our Twitter or Facebook accounts. Um, so that's it. I really want to thank you again for joining this presentation. I hope uh, it was useful for you for getting familiar, familiar with visual analytics and how it can assist you in optimizing your app. Uh, thank you very much.